Good morning, Chris. It's Jeremy here. Great to see you in space, as always. Uh, I got to tell you, it's really awesome. Your school is cool. And uh, I saw a picture of you at the front door made out of the photos of students from the school. So I thought that was pretty neat. So an awesome school you have here. I've got some really excited kids who want to learn a little bit about space. So I'm going to get going with the questions here. I'll be standing right here, Chris. Now, everybody, Chris can't see us. We can see him. He can only hear us. So I'll be standing here, Chris, so if you need any help or any demonstrations, you just ask and I'll help you out. So here's our first question. Just introduce yourself. Hi, Commander Hatfield. My name is Sunda Siddiqui and I'm in grade five. I would like to know what might be the coolest thing you've ever seen in space. Good morning, Sundas. The coolest thing I've ever seen in space. Let's see. Um, I think maybe the coolest thing I've ever seen in space is sunrise. When the sun comes up, Sundas, it is beautiful. The, we come around the world and we sort of drive into the sunshine and the whole horizon suddenly glows beautiful orange and every color in the rainbow and then the sun bursts up and the space station out these windows the big solar arrays suddenly they 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 glow blood red and then yellow and orange and then blue as the as the light shines on them and then suddenly we're in the daylight and that happens so fast and it happens 16 times a day so i think the coolest thing is sunrise. Great question. And because Chris Hadfield is in space, it takes a few seconds for the answers for our questions to get to Chris and then for the message to get back to us. Hi, Commander Hadfield. My name is Zofisha Siddiqui and I'm in grade three. I would like to know, do you think you are going to find something interesting up in space that you can use for science? If you do, what do you think it might be? Oh, we're finding out all sorts of things. Behind me right here is a Canadian experiment that's looking at how to make uh, materials better like paint, where there's little tiny bits of stuff dissolved in a liquid that uh, on Earth they behave differently because of gravity. We're also collecting energy from the universe, trying to find out what the universe is made of. We're collecting dark matter and trying to understand antimatter. And there's a big magnet on the top of the space station. Collect that. And we're also understanding the human body of how to, um, how our system works better, how we balance, how we see. Because when you take away gravity, a lot of things change. So it's a really good laboratory to study the body. So I think there's all sorts of different things we're going to find here that are going to help us understand the universe better and help us live better on Earth. Hi, Commander Hatfield. My name is Riley Ford and I am in grade four. I would like to know, do you know if there are any living things in space? Riley, that's a good question. We've been looking. Uh, we have sent probes to pretty much every planet in the solar system and a couple of the moons. Uh, we've been to a few asteroids. We even have a couple spaceships that have gone out of our solar system, basically, beyond where the sun has an influence. It's right on the edge of that now. And we have not found any living thing anywhere else except Earth and here on the International Space Station. We're looking. But we did just find out, uh, using the Hubble telescope and other telescopes, that we think pretty much every star has planets. And even in just our galaxy, there are billions of stars. So there are billions and billions of planets. So it's probably not that there isn't other living things. It's probably just that we haven't found it yet. Hi, Commander Hadfield. My name is Charlotte Kaya, and I am in grade one. I would like to know, what is the hardest part of being in charge of the ISS? What's the hardest part of being in charge of the ISS? I think the hardest part is being ready all the time for things to go badly. Because when things are going well, it's, it's easy to be in charge. When, when everybody's having a good time and nothing's broken, then it's not so hard being in charge. But you have to be ready all the time 
you can't just be surprised when things go badly. And so I think the hardest part about being in charge is always being ready so that you can do the right thing when things go badly. And that might mean if a meteorite came through this wall right here now and we started losing pressure, or if we had a fire, or if somebody's family got sick, or something like that. So that's the hardest part, is always being ready for things to go wrong. Thanks. Okay, Chris, I think we're ready for a space trick. We got more questions, but maybe you could give us a quick space uh, trick, a flip or something like that. Field. My name is Ibrahim Vakil and I'm in grade six. I would like to know how would your body be affected by being in space for a long time? Your body has a lot of changes when you take away gravity. First is um, you don't know how to balance. There's, there's no way to say which way's up. I can go any way I like and it all feels like I'm right side up. It doesn't matter. So it's really confusing at first to have no up or down. Your body gets very confused by that. Uh, the next is gravity doesn't push your blood down to your feet anymore. So uh, your whole fluid shifts. It's like, like standing on your head. So you get a big headache and everything f moves up to your head. You get a big swollen head. But also your body decides, I don't need a strong skeleton anymore. And so you start to lose your skeleton. So we, we exercise really hard, two hours every day, to keep our skeleton, our muscles strong. And the rest of it, we just let sort of get used to being in space. My legs got really skinny up here in space because gravity's, gravity's not pushing the blood down into my legs. There's no extra fluid there. But when I get home, it'll all change again, and I'll, I'll readapt to being an Earthling. But right now, I'm a Spaceling. My name is Nikki Rodriguez and I am in grade two. I would like to know, when you get close to a star, what does it really look like? I'd like to know so I can draw them better. Uh, stars come in all different sizes. Ours is just a little one. The sun is just kind of a little sort of yellow star. There are red ones. There are ones that look sort of brownish. There are huge white ones. There are some that look sort of blue. It depends on, on what chemicals are in them and how strong they are. Uh, but from the space station, you know what they look like? They look like perfect points of light, like an absolutely beautiful, perfect diamond of light. A, they don't even twinkle, just a piercing, brilliant point of light. That's what stars look like from here, because there's nothing in the way in between my eyes and the star, there's, there's nothing to stop the light. They're perfect. Thanks. Hi, Commander Hadfield. My name is James Campbell, and I'm in grade eight. It's said that when you go up in a spaceship, you move so fast that when you come back to Earth, you are 0 0.00001 seconds younger. I would like to know if that is true, and if so, how? One of the, the smartest people that we ever, ever produced as a species, one of the smartest humans ever, was a guy named Albert. And Albert f did the mathematics and figured that out. There was no way to prove his mathematics, but Albert figured it out. And he found that if you do the math, the faster you go, the slower time should go. And if you get up to the speed of light, the time slows way, way down. Now light goes, when, you know, the sun makes light and it takes a few minutes to get to the earth, but light goes 300,000 kilometers a second. 300,000 kilometers every second. That's how fast light goes. We're only going eight kilometers a second. So you guys are, are going a lot slower than I am. So therefore, my time moves very, very slightly differently than yours. But if I was going way faster, then if a, a second went by for me, it might seem like a minute to you. And so when I came back to Earth, you'd be a lot older than I would. Uh, 
but we're not going anywhere near that fast. And I don't even know if I'll be able to tell the difference in my life of 0 0.0001 seconds. When we get going faster, maybe, but for now, we can't really even see the difference. And that Albert was Albert Einstein. Thanks. Hi, Commander Hatfield. My name is Lisa Hu, and I'm in grade 7. Temperature change and dampness affects the sound and shape of a guitar. I would like to know, does your guitar sound different on the ISS than it does on Earth? Is there anything you have to change on your guitar or how you play it to make it sound right? Yes, uh, temperature and humidity affect a guitar, a guitar like this one. Um, and this is a wooden guitar. It's made in, in Vancouver. It's a Larry Vey guitar. But uh, I find up on the space station that I have to tune it more often. It seems to go out of tune a little more often, partially because of the dry air up here, partially, though, because I can't ever set my guitar somewhere. I normally have to hook it somewhere, and I hook it by the tuners. And so I constantly have to tune it. But it ends up sounding pretty good. Here, I'll play it just a little bit. Sounds pretty good, actually. I don't know if the mic is picking up the cheers and the applause, Chris, but everyone loves that. Thank you. Hi, Commander Hatfield. How might I become an astronaut? Say your name one more time. Fun. Which how should I say? <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. How can you become an astronaut? Really, how can you become anything? You know, how are you going to grow up to be the principal of Chris Hadfield Public School, or the mayor of Milton, or an airline pilot like my dad, or uh, whoever, you know, how are you going to grow up to be anything? Part of it, number one, is decide what you might want to be. Think about it. What might I want to be? Because it should be something that's really exciting to you, something that you really want to do. And then, Start turning yourself into that person. You can start to turn yourself into an astronaut today. And it doesn't happen just like that. You can ask Jeremy Hansen. It takes a lot of years. But every single decision you make turns you a little bit into the person you're going to be tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. And so if you want to be an astronaut, you need to keep your body in shape. So you need to think about you know, not letting yourself get fat. Think about what you eat and exercise. You need to learn things, so you have to choose what courses to take and how you're going to study and what you're going to watch on TV. And you need to learn how to work. And so you might think about working around the house or maybe doing a summer job or, or getting delivering newspapers or something. And then later on, how you know, are you going to go to school? What job are you going to get? And day by day, it doesn't just choose to be an astronaut. You have to turn yourself into who you want to be. And so what I'd recommend is just start thinking about it and then realize that the decisions you make every day turn you into who you're going to be tomorrow. Hi, Commander Hadfield. What gave you the inspiration of being the most successful Canadian astronaut? Wow. Uh, the most successful Canadian astronaut. I don't know if I'm the most successful Canadian astronaut. I'm, I'm the one who's in space for right now. Uh, but Marc Garneau flew three times in space, and he was our first Canadian in space. And uh, Julie Payette, she was the chief engineer of the space shuttle. So she had to be responsible for everything on the space shuttle. So we've had a lot of very good, successful astronauts. Uh, but the, the things that I'm doing now, they're because I started working at it when I was your age. When I was, before I was even 10 years old, I decided to be an astronaut. And I started working at it and studying and thinking about it and, and making my body ready for it. And I've been studying my whole life and training and really thinking about what I want to do with my life and then working towards it. And now, as a result, now I'm old, I'm 53, but now here I am having a chance to live and work 
and play guitar on board a spaceship and actually command a spaceship. So I think if there's anything that would make me a, a successful astronaut, it's because of pursuing my dreams and years of hard work. Riley, hi Commander Hatfield. What is the first thing you would like to do when you come back home? The first thing I'd like to do when I come back home is have a hot shower. Because on the space station, we don't have any running water. We just have a little tap to get drinking water out of. So when we want to wash, we just have to use washcloths or little, little cloths to clean ourselves off. And I really like standing under a hot shower and having hot water on me and being able to get clean that way. So that's something, I could still talk to my family from here and I can do good work and the food is good, but I can't have a hot shower or a bath. And that's what I, that's what I think I'll like the most. Hey, Chris, we can't help but notice the windows behind you. What do you see when you look out a window? Let's see. I, I can see the world. I can see um, where we are right now, which is just off the coast of South America. I can look up and see space, but plus through the window I can see the space station. I can see the big solar rays and the pieces of the space station. But that way is universe and that way is the world. And the world is this beautiful big blue curve. It's just, it's gorgeous. And it's really fun to float to the window and see South America right there out your window. It's just, it's, um, it's like a, a present, like a gift every time that suddenly gets opened when you go to the window. Commander Hatfield, do you miss your family when you're in space? That's a good question. Yes, I do. Uh, I try and talk to my wife pretty much every day, and I talk to my, my kids pretty often. I have three children, and um, I email with them, and sometimes I can talk to them like I'm talking to you with video, and sometimes I can almost sort of like a Skype phone call. So I get to talk to them, but I don't get to touch them. I don't get to hug them. I don't get to see them in person. So yes, I miss them. So Chris, it looks like we only have one minute left, but I uh, wondered if you had anything else you wanted to pass along to us, and we'd love to see a couple more space tricks before, uh, before we lose you today. Well, okay. This, this is just my wristwatch. It's just pretty cool living in weightlessness. It's like, it's like magic. It's like you have a superpower where you can just fly and jump and soar and zip all over the place. It's, it's so much fun being weightless. Um, and I only got here because, number one, I decided to. That's what I decided to do with my life. And then, number two, I worked at it for my whole life. And so I really want to remind all of the Hadfield Hawks to think about that. What are you going to do with your life? You're going to grow up to be something. Why don't you choose what you might want to grow up to be and then start making yourself into that person? You can do it slowly, day by day. And with that, it is amazing. One day at a time, one step at a time, it's amazing where life can lead you. And Jeremy Hansen there with you, and me here on the space station, we are both evidence of that. It was great to having a chance to join you in Milton. Hi to everybody that's there in the room, and uh, I'm gonna do my best to get a good picture of Milton here as soon as the clouds clear and we're overhead. I look forward to seeing you when I get back. Commander Hadfield, this is Principal Mark. Uh, on behalf of the students here and the staff and all the parents and everybody on Earth who had a chance to see this, thank you. We wish you all the best on your mission and look forward to seeing you when you come back home. Thank you very much. We'll play a little music on the way out.
Bye, everybody. The station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.